The Austin Symphony Orchestra will continue its Masterwork series with concerts February 9th and 10th, titled USA and the UK, and I might add, in the 20C. All of the works are from the 20th century, and the soloist for this concert is the one and only Anton Nell, and he is in the Draylen Mason Music Studio of KMFA right now. Welcome back, Anton, great to see you. It's always good to see you, and it's always nice to be in this beautiful space. It is a beautiful space, and of course, we're so lucky that Anton decided to land here in Austin, Texas quite some time ago now, but he was the uh, winner of the 1987 Naumburg International Piano Competition at Carnegie Hall, and he has traveled the world and continues to uh, be in and out of town, but we're lucky he is here for this concert, and it's very exciting. It's You'll be performing the Benjamin Britten Piano Concerto. Uh, was this your choice, P Peter Bay's choice? Peter Bay asked me to play this piece, and uh, it's something that I had known before because I actually had a student who played it many years ago. So I like the piece very much, but it's not something that is regularly programmed. Um, and I'm kind of surprised because the piece is amazingly effective and super accessible in terms of listening to it. It's really, it's a spectacular piece to watch as well as to hear. It is, I would say, extraordinarily difficult. And it also requires the large orchestra. The orchestra has a great part in it. So, I mean, once the forces join, it's really a lot of fun, but it takes effort to work on it. And so I was very glad to accept the challenge. Of course, I love the opportunity to learn something new, but also uh, Peter and the orchestra have given me so many chances to play over the years. I think that this is, since I've started to play with the orchestra, I think this is my 17th concerto year. Wow. Well, I've seen many of those performances, and we're so lucky, as I say. Uh, this concerto, although accessible, as you say, and very lively, um, it's unusual. It's in four movements, and uh, apparently the third movement, which is now an impromptu, had been something else before that, an aria, starts off with a toccata. Would you take us through the movements and maybe play a little bit? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, the piece uh, is in four movements. Um, and one has to bear in mind when one listens to it that Britain was a fantastic pianist. Um, there are great recordings of him playing, of course, with, uh, with Rostropovich, all the cello repertoire, and of course, with Peter Pierce, his longtime collaborator, collaborator, you know, for whom he wrote glorious songs. And so he knew his way around the keyboard. He played wonderfully. Um, so, the piece is, so the piece is very pianistic, but it is definitely a vehicle to show off. <laughs> and, and so the first one is this big toccata and the, the pianist just starts right off out of the, you know, with this kind of thing, just right out of the, out of the bat and just goes and goes and goes. And it, it, the piano just really is very, very athletic for the whole movement, which is about 10 minutes long. And uh, maybe what I'll demonstrate from it, it has, um, as is typical of a lot of concertos, a big, cadenza near the end of the first moon in a very kind of, you know, sort of style like you would find, say, in a piece like the Tchaikovsky concerto or anything like that, where it's like, never mind what you've done, here's more. So let me just play a few bars and you'll see uh, how effective this is. You know, etc. It goes on and on and on. It's very exciting. <laughs> then the second movement is a waltz. And this is, well, it's just filled with charm. It sort of has this great line for, for some solo instruments. Uh, it's maybe even, you know, it could be something 
out of the Rosen Cavalier or something. It's that kind of thing, and it is beautifully orchestrated. The, the piano part sort of swirls in and out of it. It's quite short. Delightful. Then it goes into a movement called Impromptu. Now, this movement, um, let me just find it here for you, was initially something else, and after the first performance, he replaced it mm -hmm. um, into something that is more um, substantial and um, I would say on a higher level and it, it sort of has a ground base that follows through. It's a set of variations that starts with this very simple and beautiful solo thing. And then it builds also again more cadenza thing. And then the orchestra joins in with this while the while the piano is doing the ground bass, you can hear those. Which carries through the whole movement. And then the orchestra. Beautiful and whole, a whole set of variations on that with many different kinds of moods and effects. It's very atmospheric, and you see glimpses here of um, Britain's later works. He, where he, you know, he's a master orchestrator. Some of the sounds you might hear in pieces like Peter Grimes, even and things like that. So this goes on for a while, and then without warning, segues into the last mood, which is a march. And this one is maybe the the lightest, and um, it. It's sort of a little bit like a circus. <laughs> it's sort of, uh, it has the... In the orchestra preparing and then... This kind of thing, it's quite rollicking. And then... It's quite fun. Um, and it goes through uh, quite an extensive workout and, and lots of very, very brilliant um, writing for the keyboard. And then, of course, it finishes off with a very blistering and super virtuosic and exciting coda. The whole work um, takes, it's, it's uh, longer than 35 minutes. It's about 37 minutes long. So it's a, it's a very good workout for everybody. <laughs> For yourself included. Thank you for demonstrating some of that. And as you said, and Peter Bay said on the Classical Austin show, it's almost amazing it's not programmed more. He thought maybe, you know, because of the difficulty, not only for the pianist, but for the orchestra. So, you know, you want to make sure that it can be prepared properly, and you're just the person to do it. I know that you love a challenge, and when I first interviewed you 20, 21 years ago, we talked about your your memory and, and that you have a very good memory for uh, memorizing music, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you have an, a new work, I mean, this is not a brand new work, but it's new to you. Uh, and it's you said it's quite difficult. Mm. Uh, how, how long have you been preparing this and what does that entail? Well, quite a bit. I mean, I've known about this engagement for a while. And so what I do with something like this, I work on it in very small increments. And then as the performance gets closer and closer, it's kind of like a, like a funnel. You sort of go, go into it. And um, yes, I've been nibbling, nibbling away at it because I play so much other music all at the same time. And then you sort of leave it for a while and you come back. And um, I have um, notes in here. I see that I sometimes date all my work. Um, from about a year ago, but it's, uh, you know, just a little bit at a time. And of course, studying the score and just getting to know it is the most important thing. And then gradually, uh, it's a piece that's very rewarding. It sits well in the hands, but, uh, but it's just, a, for me, I can learn things quickly and I can cram if I have to, but it's a, a process I'd rather not do. I like to work on things over a long period of time and sort of let them internalize. And so with that, that's what's been happening with us. So I feel, you know, that it's really ready and comfortable and I'm excited to feel what it feels like when I played with the orchestra for the first time because that's a totally different adventure. I know that nobody here has played it and I'm sure that nobody here has ever heard it live. It's the same here and this, what a delight that you will be performing it with the Austin Symphony. Uh, specifically because the first thing I ever noticed about you is just how you bring in the audience. The audience is always part of your performance. It's never like 
stand oh, back. Oh no, no. I think no. I think everybody uh, who will hear this for the first time will be amazed at how easy it is to listen to. I mean, if you have to compare it to say composers that we know, it is not even as contemporary as, or modern sounding, shall I say, as Prokofiev. I mean, it's even, it's less, it's more conservative than that even. So it is, there's not a thing about it that is remotely sort of off-putting, and it's fun to watch because everybody is very busy. <laughs> That's what I would say, but, but also, as an audience member watching you, I feel like I'm along for the ride, like it's a joy ride. I'm at least in the passenger seat oh, when good. you're performing it. It's just <laughs> well, it's, thrilling. Well, that's, that's, that's it. I mean, everybody, you know, it's, it is a show. Well, uh, would you like to play us something else, just what you feel like playing in this moment at this time? Absolutely. Since this um, concert is, has to do with uh, the USA and with Britain, literally and figuratively, yep. um, I, maybe I can play something by a composer who spent a lot of time in England, George Frederick Handel. We'll go right back to the beginning, and I'll play a set of variations called The Harmonious Blacksmith from his fifth keyboard suite.
Anton Nell performing in the Draylen Mason Music Studio of KMFA, the Harmonious Blacksmith uh, from the Suite Number no. 5 by Handel. That was just gorgeous. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. I, I wanted to start clapping, and there are a few of us in the studio, but uh, I didn't want to break the moment with that. Uh, would you like to play anything else for us? Oh, sure. Why not? How about something... This, will, this, is, this is not American or British, but it's, it's something beautiful that uh, I heard my mother play many, many years ago by a Czech composer called Fibich. And he wrote a, a, a pile of piano music that is largely forgotten. But she had this book with, you know, 101 solos the world loves kind of thing. And there was this little piece in it called Poem, which I remember her playing. And I absolutely had forgotten all about it. And then a few years ago, I had a student from the Czech Republic who brought me all this music, including this little piece, which I had totally forgotten about. So I at once got a copy. And this year, I'm playing it as a little encore. It's only about two minutes long, but it is divine. It's called Poem. Antonel performed a poem by Fibich, composer, a Czech composer. That was so beautiful. It was so important to you and to your dear mom. Thank you. Yeah, lovely. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I know that you're always traveling. Do you have anything else coming up after your Austin Symphony Orchestra performances? Yes, yes. This has been, the past few weeks has been amazing. I uh, just, just before these concerts this week. I had six concerts in nine days in, uh, in Seattle and San Francisco. And before that, I was in um, Denver and the week before in Arizona. Now, after this, I am here actually for this week, which is nice, and also for next week. And then the week after that, I'm doing some stuff on forte piano because I have this other life in early music. So some uh, forte piano chamber music right here in Austin for La Folia, Austin Baroque. Um, and then Oh gosh, lots of other things. I have to go to Oklahoma and to Toronto and to Chicago and to Atlanta and so on. Well, uh, your students are richer for, your, for all the things that you do, but I I'm, guess you have to catch up with them when you come back. Yes, yes. I, um, because of the busyness in the beginning of the semester, I, uh, I actually I did some sort of pre-teaching before the semester started because a lot of them, as as good timing would have it, are on the road at the moment themselves. I've got uh, one of my students is in an international competition in Dubai, and another one or two or three of them are on the road doing auditions for incoming students, and another uh, another lady is doing a lot of presentation at conferences. So they've been busy too doing their things. So so everybody's been been working hard and. Well, it sounds like you don't have time to bake bread anymore. That's something you picked up during the pandemic, right? Do you still Oh, make... I, I, I am going to bake bread today. I haven't <laughs> baked in two weeks. 
<laughs> so, no, I mean, the two, of course, my activities, you know, apart from playing the piano is, you know, the kitchen and, of course, my, my pickleball game that is improving all the time. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so life is busy. Sounds like a beautifully balanced life. Thank you again, Anton Nell. Thank you.